Welcome back. Financial Issues. I'm Dan Celia. It's great to be here. Uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, Zion Oil with us, and uh, we're going to ask a few questions. I know everybody is interested in what is going on in Israel with uh, Zion Oil. I just want to say, I, uh, you all know this, but I'll say this anyway. I own Zion Oil stock, uh, have for a long time. And uh, I've continued to hold on to that. And I know some of you have. Uh, it was on my buy list uh, a few weeks back. Uh, it's not now. I don't want to hold this out as an endorsement other than an endorsement of what they're doing, why they're doing it, and uh, who they're doing it for primarily that I'm a deep believer in. We have uh, Chief Operating Officer uh, Dustin Gwen and Victor Carrillo, the CEO. How are you guys doing? Oh, here we go. Your voice. Can you hear I, us? I imagine you guys are feeling pretty good today. We are feeling pretty good. <laughs> On the heels of uh, yesterday, we put out a press release, and as you well know, the activity uh, in the stock is, is very high right now. And uh, But we're feeling much better, really, just about the ongoing operations at the well site uh, in Israel as we speak. Victor, um, you guys are down about, um, I guess, 3,500 feet or so, 4,000 feet. Um, you've got a ways to go. You're, you're thinking, or at least I should say, proposed depth uh, was 15,000 feet. And uh, I saw yesterday that you guys are looking to do obtaining some sidewalk cores. You're going to take some samples, I guess, at the, at the depth that you are now. And what are you looking for? What do you expect to see there? Yeah, let me, let me step back a little bit and say that as of yesterday's press release, uh, we were at about 3,280 feet okay. on our way toward uh, up to 15,000 feet okay. uh, approximately. Yes, we, we announced that uh, we plan to obtain sidewall cores, which, frankly, had been the plan from the beginning. And uh, what it is is you, you put in a specialty tool downhole and obtain multiple samples of the actual rock, probably one by two inch little cores. Mm. And with those, once we pull them up uh, and evaluate them, we just get more rock characteristics that can help us evaluate the geologic uh, formations that we encounter. Mm -hmm. So yes, we plan to do that um, in the future. And uh, when before you started drilling, I know that, that uh, you guys have spent an awful lot of time with your geological surveys and all the data that you had gathered. And uh, might seem like a silly question. Obviously, you feel very good about this or you wouldn't be drilling. But um, I guess I guess how how the core the samples that you took and the geological surveys that you did um, you 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 certainly came away with a level of confidence uh, that that uh, a discovery is uh, um, you feel pretty good about it. Look, we so yes, we've been working on this particular license and prospect for several years. Frankly, we applied for it and were granted the license, which is a about a ninety nine thousand acre license back in December of two thousand thirteen. So we're into the uh, fourth year of this uh, license, and we can we have up to seven years by one year extensions. So. Over the course of the years, yes, the, the entire geoscience team has uh, done multiple studies uh, of the area, and we do feel good about this prospect. You know, frankly, we've, we've mapped a deep structure near a, uh, near a deep basin where we feel hydrocarbons are likely to have been generated, mm -hmm. we hope migrated, and have been trapped. What we feel most confident about is that the prospect location is really well positioned to encounter uh, uh, 
key geologic ingredients of an active petroleum system. Beyond that, all I can say is we feel good about the prospect, but as, as you and no doubt your listeners all know, that oil and gas exploration, particularly this type of well in a wildcat setting, is always very risky. And so uh, that's about all I can say to it. We feel good about it, but there is a substantial uh, amount of risk involved. Sure. And if oil is uh, found... What will be the market for it other than uh, our brothers and sisters in Israel? What will be the, the market outside of that, or won't there be? Hey, Dan, this is Dustin Gwynn. I appreciate you having us on the call. Sure. We're, uh, we're excited to be uh, visiting with you and your, and your listeners. <laughs> As we know that Israel is a, uh, is a net importer of of, of, of their hydrocarbons, specifically oil. And so right now, uh, the, the country uses about 200,000 barrels per day. They do have refining in the country, which, which makes the infrastructure of the com- country, you know, a lot more readily available to be able to uh, produce and, uh, and use their own hydrocarbons and their own oil. So, while it's while it's exciting to think about what the uh, export opportunities are or what the kind of the worldwide implications of of finding a large uh, petroleum field in Israel may be, what we understand right now is that there's an immediate need availability uh, and uh, consumption need in the country. So there is so you know obviously you would have to enter into things like takeoff agreements. You would have to have Supply supply agreements with the refineries, of which are not not a long ways away, closest in in Haifa. Um, but you know there there's a there's an immediate consumption opportunity within the country. So that would be our immediate customer is mm-hmm. is to supply Israel. It's you know the goal of the company is to not uh, provide oil for you know our goal is to bless Israel, and so that's yeah. that's that's where our consumers are going to be. And Dan, let me just follow up by saying there are, as Dustin mentioned, two refineries in Israel, in Haifa and Ashdod, that have a combined refining capacity of over 200,000 barrels of oil per day. So we have the ability to uh, transport to those refineries and refine whatever we may encounter. Mm. So uh, one of the key pieces of infrastructure obviously is there, and one of the, one of the uh, I, and I, I assume there could be some uh, pipeline infrastructure that that uh, might have to be placed or or uh, transporting over the road. I'm sure, but um, that's yeah. If if we find oil, you know, obviously the transportation uh, is a lot yeah. easier problem to solve. It's, yeah. it's a matter of 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 you know you know having tank batteries, filling tank batteries, and then essentially trucking it uh, mm-hmm. to the refinery. So oil is a lot easier to handle. Than, than maybe gas line is, but obviously with the with the um, uh, the discovery of the offshore fields, you know there is infrastructure in place uh, to handle gas, but but oil is a lot easier to uh, uh, to, to fill tank batteries and uh, and truck. So what's the timeline? What how long does it is it is it going to be to get to just to get another ten thousand feet? Well, you know, right now, you know, you can kind of extrapolate it. Uh, you know, it's taken us essentially, uh, we split it on June 5th. It is now July 4th. Uh, when we issued our press release yesterday, we were approximately at 1,000 meters. So, you know, the drilling as you get a little deeper, although it may sound somewhat counter, counterintuitive, gets a little bit easier as long as you don't encounter mechanical issues or, or geological issues. Um, because obviously the hole gets smaller, the bigs get smaller, the, the lifting of the cuttings gets a little bit easier. But to answer your question in the easiest way is that our proposed timeline uh, was about a 90-day drill. Um, so that's to drill, test, uh, case, and cement the well down to approximately 15,000 feet. So that's the proposed timeline. Um, things take a little longer. There's always, you know, there's always a little bit of delay. Uh, but I think 90 days is a good conservative estimate. So, you know, that would take us, you know, to about September. So I know that uh, we have tens of thousands of listeners that are 
that support uh, Zion Oil, and uh, I know so many that have been praying for Zion Oil for quite some time and uh, their success to bless uh, the nation of Israel. And, and um, we're, we're very excited about this, and we are uh, very even just, just excited that there is a uh, drill in the ground. I know that is um, uh, the, the work that has go, gone into getting to this point. And I know there's certainly, um, you know, regulatory burden that you guys had to get through and government. You know, this is very new for the government of Israel. People don't realize that, you know, uh, they don't have this EPA that's been around for 40 years that, that uh, you're dealing with. So everything here is uh, very new and it's very exciting. And we're going to continue to pray for you guys. Is there anything that uh, you can give us any other information that you can give us that would be helpful for us as we pray and, and think about um, how we can help. Dan, you know, prayer for Zion Oil and Gas, for our team on the ground, for the drilling crew, for the safety, for our management team, for all of our employees. We're a small company, uh, small but publicly traded, but prayer is perhaps the greatest thing that you and your viewers or your viewers and listening audience can give us. We pray, we continue to pray for God's guidance and direction and wisdom mm. and discernment in, in, uh, in drilling this well and making the important decisions that will come along the way. So we greatly appreciate all those prayers. As you know, uh, Zion was founded on biblical foundation. We're a faith-based mm. company, yep. fully founded on Scripture. But bringing the science to decide uh, precisely where to drill. So mm. we appreciate that. We encourage your listeners to go to our website at zionoil.com. Uh, we currently have a unit program, but one of the other things we mentioned yesterday is that program will end as of uh, close of business next Wednesday. Oh, okay. So, that's good to know. Uh, that's an important part yeah. of that press release. So I encourage folks to either call us or go on the website specifically, zionall.com, to find out more information. And we will periodically uh, make additional press releases depending on on the need to get that information out. Well, we'll make sure we have you back. And Dustin uh, and Victor, we sure do appreciate you guys and what you're doing. And uh, we will continue to pray. And folks, zionoil.com, zionoil.com. And uh, you'll, you'll see I can help. Thank you, guys. We sure do appreciate it. God.